okay, Venus? Okay, Steve. Right. Let's go. book, Jonathan? Well, it's a bit old-timey. Jonathan Zero, Jr., that's no way to talk about a gift you've been given. Well, it is old-timey. All right, that's enough. Uh, thanks for babysitting tonight, Venus. I wouldn't have asked you, but this meeting's uh, kind of important. I understand, Commander. We all know you wouldn't miss bingo night for anything. Uh, well, uh, it's important to keep up the morale of Space City, you know. Darling, are you coming? We'll be late. Uh, right away, my love. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, duty calls. See you later, Venus. Jonathan. Good night, Pop. Good night, Commander. So, Jonathan, you think the book is old-timey, huh? I thought you'd like it. Adventures and pirates. Yeah, but it all takes place on Earth. I like space adventures. Wish there were pirates in space. How do you know they aren't? Well, okay. Tell me a story about them. That's what I was afraid of. Well, all right, I'll do my best. Way out in space, in sector 25. Say, that's Steve Zodiac sector. That's right. Well, there is a planet called Minera. It is a planet rich in radioactive rock the richest source of radioactive minerals known to man. Without its vital ores, Earth would be finished. It's kind of weird. Well, it's no use daydreaming about it, lad. We've got work to do. The sooner we get started, the sooner we shall be away. What's that planet up there called, Jock? Oh, that... That's the planet Aridon, otherwise known as the desert planet. It has air to breathe, but the water it once had is dried up. Now no one can live there, so it is a perfect place for a pirate hideout. From here, they're able to plunder Earth's space freighters as they leave the planet of Minera. Is that the lot then, Captain Cat? Oh, I hope so. That's the lot for this trip, Patch. A good haul, too. Oh, it is a hard way of making a living roaming the space sky under the skull and crossbones. But don't forget, we're no ordinary pirates. Our prize is the jewel of the universe, Earth. Oh, can't come quick enough for me, Captain. This desert planet is a fair wilderness. Anyone but a hardy spaceman would die of thirst or hunger or both. Vittles and grog, that's all you can think of. When soon, as the result of our raids, Earth will be so short of atomic ore that we'll be able to take her almost single-handed. Unless Colonel Zodiac... Zodiac. We're more than a match for him. <laughs> have to admit, Steve, things are getting serious. No less than 20 of our freighters from Minera have been attacked in the past month. 
It's not just a question of valuable cargo. But the radioactive ores we get from the planet Monera are vital to the survival of the Earth. I'm well aware of that, Commander. But things are not desperate. Not yet, no. As soon as the Q spaceship is ready, I'll take it on the freighter route from Monera. The pirates won't be able to tell it from a freighter until it's too late. Meanwhile, Venus and Maddock are working on a substitute for the ore. The professor and I think we should come up with an answer very soon. He's working on one of the calculations now. It may do the trick. Just try this one trick of mine. I I it's a new one. I I just while the next stage of the experiment is uh, <laughs> cooking, as it were. Okay, Professor, but make it snappy. I I take any card. Don't show it to me. Uh, I can see a low card. Yep, definitely. I think it's a... Uh, it's a four. Go on. Uh, four of hearts. Hey, correct. How did you do it? The conjurer never divulges a trick. Oh, surfer and space cats. The experiment. You cheating old toot, Professor. Oh, no. Matthew, what have you been up to? I can't turn my back for a minute. Uh, uh, Venus, I uh, really, Professor. You ought to know better. I shouldn't laugh so much if I were you, Lieutenant. I should get up to the control room as quick as you can. Commander Zero is screaming like a Martian hippo for you. You were where? In the professor's laboratory, sir. And what, may I ask, were you doing there? Conjuring tricks? I've got a trick I've just invented. A, a drinking trick. Not now, Professor. We've got urgent work to do. Uh, just this one. All right, but please make it snappy. <coughs> uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, here I have a glass, and here a jug of colored water. Uh, pour the water into the glass, so. We now have a glass full of water, right? Go on. <laughs> With my magic wand, I uh, tap the glass once, uh, twice, Three times, and the colored water is gone. Well done, Professor. And uh, to prove the veracity of this whole piece of wizardry, I'll turn the glass upside down. <coughs> Professor. Well, I'll be darned. Now, what could have gone wrong? Oh, Professor, you really are a tootie. There you are, Commander. A few final adjustments in the morning and she's ready. But she looks like an ordinary freighter. Exactly. And if she can fool you, Commander, she can fool any space pirate. And believe me, she packs a mighty punch. The perfect space Q-ship. Uh, congratulations, Steve. Thank you, Commander. I must say, I'm kind of pleased with her myself. And maybe Jock should stay on Minerva until you're able to act as escort. Call him up on the Neutroni transmitter, Lieutenant. Yes, Commander. At once, Commander. Space Patrol calling Chief Engineer. Chief Engineer to Space Patrol. I'm just about to leave this infernal planet of robots. Wouldn't you prefer to wait until we can send an escort? Steve's Q spaceship will be ready for takeoff in the morning. Is that an order, Commander? No, Jock, just a suggestion. Then if you don't mind, I'll be on my way. There's no danger. <laughs> what would any pirate want with me? All right, Jock, but be careful. Have you ever known a Scotsman to be otherwise, Commander? Shall I call him back, Commander? No, it's not necessary. He's a great guy, that Jock, as tough as they come. Dump him overboard with a pilot. They won't last long on this planet without food or water. A slow, malingering death, Captain. Things are working out very well. Oh, indeed they are, Captain. Indeed they are. Don't you think you should take the Professor and Venus on this mission? I'd like to, Commander, but they'll be doing more good in the laboratory. We may need that substitute for the radioactive ore yet. Robert and I can manage okay. Anything else you need? Yes, everything's ready, Commander, and I'm raring to go. The pirates are leaving their spaceship in free float. I guess they're going to take ours. Aye. I can hear them running up the motors. Wow. 
Kawaif, only I can lay my hands on him. Left him lying there, I did, Captain, like a couple of babes. So you told me, Patch, twenty times. Oh, it was as neat a job of tying up as ever I have done, sir. <laughs> but this old craft we're in now, she's as cumbersome as an old space cow. With respect, Captain, I think we should have stuck to our own craft. And Zodiac would have spotted us in a moment. You heard the radio conversation, Patch. He'll be out looking for our spaceship. But uh, we shan't be there, Captain. Exactly, you old space dog. Zodiac isn't the only one who has a Q spaceship. Oh, it is a wonderful trap, Captain. Even I can see that with half an eye. All we have to do is to wait for Zodiac to fall in it. And then? <laughs> <laughs> No sign of space engineer yet. How much is he overdue now? Over four hours. Any news from Steve, Commander? No, we're maintaining neutroni radio silence. Just in case the pirates should be listening in. Not a sign of the pirate ship anywhere. If only we knew where their hideout was. Jock's overdue. What's happened? I wish I knew. He's just disappeared. Uh, takes more than a tin pot pirate to keep me tied down. Uh, now then... Uh... Let's get the lad here untied. Hold on. Hold on, lad. We'll have you out of this little lot in no time. Then you and I have got work to do. That's Jock's freighter. Should have been back at Space City by now. Something must be wrong. Zodiac calling freighter. Zodiac calling freighter. Can you hear me, Jock? Jock, are you receiving me? Zodiac to freighter. And when he gets no answer... He just won't be able to resist the temptation to come over and find out for himself. No reply from the freighter. I'm going over to have a look-see. You sit tight, Robert. Hot. Oh, uh, just having another little drink of this lovely elf-giving water, Captain. Go easy, Patch. It may have to last us a long time. Prepare to receive our special visitor, the redoubtable Colonel Zodiac. Here's to him, me hearty. <laughs> My guess is Steve Zodiac will be over to investigate any minute now. Just keep watching. There he is now, just leaving the freighter. Here he comes. Ready, Patch? Ready, Captain. He's in the airlock now. I'm ready for him. Jock! Jock! Are you there? Welcome aboard, Steve Zodiac. Say, what's going on here? Yeah. The water. The precious water. It's been hit by the ray gun. Well, it looks all right. Yo, fool. It'll be poisoned by radioactive rays. The whole supply will be contaminated. Conta c c uh, c poison? We'll die of thirst. We can't live without water. Don't panic, you fool. There's bound to be some in the Q ship. Come on, let's get over there. Hurry, Patch. We've got to fill all these containers. It's going to take hours. Hey, Captain. It stopped. That's all the water there is. Why, you blithering idiot. You've opened all the valves. One of them dumps the whole of the water supply in a space. Well, how was I to know that? Oh, anyway, we filled one container. I suppose it'll last us until we can get a fresh supply. And where be you going to get more water, Captain? We'll send back to Earth for some. Yeah, that's it. 
send this robot back to Earth as positive proof that we hold their precious Colonel Zodiac hostage. Shivering space timbers. Now, what we've got to do, my lad, is to use a bit of engineering ingenuity. My idea is to adapt these ultra-high compression gas cylinders into a thruster pack. Never get away with it. Another word out of you, Zodiac, and we'll have you walking the plank into outer space. Harridan on our starboard bow. Prepare to land. Aye, aye, Captain. Spaceship approaching 1680 Black, Commander. It must be Steve. It is. Look, he's coming into land. But, uh, why no radio message? Yeah, sounds like trouble. Let's get over to the launching pad and meet him. Landing gone. Robert? But where's Steve? What's this? It looks like a letter. Open it, Venus. It's a ransom note. They've got Steve. This is terrible. What's the price? Water and an assurance from us that they will be left alone. If we give them water, how do we know they'll release Steve unharmed? Of course, I... I could send out a patrol. No, no, Commander. We mustn't do that. They would have their revenge on Steve. Eh, uh, water. Not exactly, uh, a valuable commodity. Unless you're a space pirate hiding out on the planet Aridon. Aridon? The desert planet. Not even a conjurer could produce water there. That's it. A conjuring trick. Hey, Commander, Venus and I will take the water in fireball. And then? Suitably doped. It should do more than quench their thirst. <sighs> oh, tis nectar to a thirsty spice feller. <laughs> easy with a water patch. Yes, go easy, Patch. It may be your last drink. The water! I'll slit your throat from ear to ear. Hold on, Patch. Killing the hostage won't do any good. Now we'll see who's the toughest, huh? Professor, I'm still doubtful about this plan of yours. Well, I uh, admit I'm a little scared myself, Venus, but uh, we've got to try. Well, I hope you have better luck this time with the trick. Well, we'll soon know. we from the desert planet now? I'll get back to the navigation bay, Venus, and give you the exact distance. And we're not far off.
I couldn't stand it. No, this is for real, Patch. Hi, Venus. Oh, it's good to see you, Steve. Boy, this is uh, just like Death Valley. No, no tricks. Or your Colonel Zodiac will get it. Got the water? It, here's one can. There's plenty more in the spaceship. You unload it and we'll be off with Colonel Zodiac. What you do then is your own lookout. How do I know the water isn't doped? Drink some yourself. All right. Give me a glass, Professor, please. Oh, give me a glass, Professor, please. Oh, fussy, ain't she? Cut out the wisecracks. There you are. I'm still standing. Give us the water and keep your distance. You pour it out, Patch, while I keep them covered. Oh, it'll be a pleasure, Captain. Eh, two lovely noggins of cool water coming up. How did you do it? You see, Steve, I drank out of a trick glass. And it worked. Well, I'm glad it did. Well, uh, they don't look as though they'll go any more roving. The last of the space pirates. Don't be so sure. Look on the starboard bow. Hello, Steve. Hold your fire, it's only me, Jock. Shiver me, Space Timbers, it's Jolly Captain Jock. Ahoy there. Ahoy there, called Steve, for he was very happy to see Jock again. Gee, that was a swell story. Is it true? Did it really happen? Well, Jonathan, I'll leave you to decide that. But one thing's for sure, you are going to sleep. Okay, Venus, it's a deal. Thanks for the story. Good night. Good night, Jonathan. Good night. I wish I was a spaceman, the fastest guy alive. I'd fly you around the universe in Fireball XL5. Way out in space together, compass of the sky. My heart would be a fireball, a fireball. Every time I gazed into your starry eyes, we'd take the path to Jupiter, and maybe very soon, we'd cruise along the Milky Way and land upon the moon to a wonderland of stardust. We'll zoom our way to Mars My heart would be a fireball A fireball Cause you would be my Venus of the stars 